cool. Okay, so this is a video to accompany the vlog. Uh, this should make it actually far quicker and far easier to follow. Uh, documenting these kind of things is always somewhat tricky. Um, this is a very straightforward process. So, without further ado, uh, we're on a standard Linux box. This isn't going to differ very much between platforms, uh, at least for Mac and Linux. Assuming you have the correct tool chains, uh, the same process should hold true. So right now what we're going to do is actually try to add the actual Raspberry Pi as an additional external target that we can target. Um, first things first, uh, go into the Options pane, Build and Run, Cute Versions, add your version in question. So, uh, ignore different things. So keep your Raspberry Pi. So QMake. Okay, again, it actually mentions the fact that it's a cute version 5 for desktop. This is something that you can entirely ignore. Um, even though it's incorrect, this is entirely usable. And the toolchains, add your toolchain. Uh, we want to add GCC. Name it something comprehensible. Okay, and as you can see, the ABI is actually correctly set. We no need to adjust any of these parameters, so we leave that set as, as is. Apply those things. And now we want to add the Raspberry Pi as an external Linux device. It's running SSH, so um, it's pretty straightforward. So add another external device, generate Linux device. Cool. Uh, IP address over here. And the image we have, certain login details, make sure that you create a new device. Um, and password, super secret. So it's tested and correct. So test the device to make sure the deployment is working, as you can see it is. I strongly recommend deploying a key there. So deploy a public key. I might need to edit this out for the fact that like a uh, deployment actually doesn't work every time. Why would this be failing? Check out. It did this last time as well. I put, uh, yeah, the address is correct, right? Any clue? Stick the password for now. <laughs> that sounds good. Uh, uh, DSA. Ah, wicked. Second time's a charm. And then we can actually use um, password this deployment and make life much easier when we start debugging things on target. And the private key file, of course, should actually match that. And hopefully we now actually have everything that we actually require in order to actually get things deploying. The only catches now are per project deployment. So we have a very simple little QML showcase that showcases QML functionality. Um, so I actually opened up the profile. It's asked me which targets I want to actually target. Um, as you can see, we actually want to specify desktop, even though we're dealing with an embedded target. Um, yeah, so desktop. And then just disable the debug build. Don't use shadow building. Build it in, in the path. And ideally, so the project is now open. Go into project files, specify your cute version, which is at the moment basically being correct, and the toolchain, which you can sort of see we added earlier. Make sure you get the right tool toolchain in there. So those are the two things you have to set under build, uh, under run. You also want to go in there. Uh, you definitely want deployment to be occurring. So deploy to remote Linux host, nothing too surprising there. And the device configuration is a Raspberry Pi they've already actually specified with the SSH information. Um, the only other thing to actually worry about now is when you run it. So you don't want to actually run it clearly locally, you want to run it remotely. So you have to add again and on remote generic Linux host. 
So now, given these two things, we should be able to actually run applications on the actual target device. One thing to bear in mind, um, most of the, the devices that we're talking about now are embedded Linux systems using a full screen OpenGL. That's the only generic uh, EGL based um, OpenGL driver we provide. So you're going to want to specify um, your platform flag over here. And um, cool. Yeah, given this, uh, we should expect everything to actually run right now. So with any luck, you can actually see remote presses have been killed and presses have been started. We can actually see correct status information coming up. And the application is now running on the board. Uh, you have to take my word for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you.